the games. Now ahead on First Look Asia, you might have just returned from a long break, but it's never too late or too early to start thinking about your next holiday. Up next, we'll have some tips on where to go and how to plan that perfect holiday. Welcome back to First Look Asia. We're just days into the new year. Some of us even back from a long break. Yeah, like but you. <laughs> how many are already dreaming about their next holiday? I am, I'm sure you are. Yes. Uh, where will you go? What are the best deals? And how much time will you need to make the most of the trip? We're well, here in the studio to reveal the top destinations for 2017 and to guide us in planning for that perfect uh, vacation. Uh, Javani Lim, co-founder and Managing Director of Quotient Travel Planner, and Aaron Hung, uh, Trip Advisor, Senior Director of Partnerships Asia Pacific. Welcome to the show. Uh, Javani, let's you. start with you. Can you ever plan too early for a holiday? No, you can never plan too early for <laughs> a holiday. No, you can never. Uh, there's a lot of work or there's a lot of research to be done when, when you plan a trip. I would say typically three to nine months wow. to do that. Oh. Well, it, it depends on the, the level of details you want. Of course, if you're just talking about short break, you can do it today and tomorrow you're off. So that's I, guess, I guess the best thing is when you plan, you look forward to it as well. So the longer you plan, <laughs> the more true. excited you get. Yes, yeah. and, and the reason why you may need to take up to a year to do that is because, uh, for example, you want to go and catch Passion of Play, which happens once every 10 years. So then you better book way in advance and you have to start your planning earlier. Mm -hmm. So that kind of explains the duration. Okay, so if we were to plan a trip, Aaron, where would you suggest? What are the top destinations we're looking at this year? Well, we looked at the data on TripAdvisor, uh, what, the, what, the, what the users are searching for in TripAdvisor. So right now, we're seeing that the users are searching for, uh, in the Asia Pacific destinations, uh, Taipei, Hong Kong, Singapore, Seoul. Um, Seoul, in fact, has jumped a lot over the last year. It's increased a lot in popularity uh, last year. But not forgetting Japan. Japan is forever the most popular destination for Asian travelers. Yeah, so Asians like to travel. Are they enjoying more of Asia these days? They like to travel to neighboring countries? Is that mm. a change? Well, it's always, uh, it's all, the nearby, the nearby destinations are always more popular because it's quick, uh, quicker to get to, it's a little bit cheaper, so you don't have to plan so long, so you can pop over there for the weekend. Uh, and may maybe when well, we looked at this data last week, so maybe people are thinking, okay, next year, quick, there are so many long weekends in Singapore, in Hong Kong, and so on. Where can we go for a quick break? Mm -hmm. And can you differentiate who is looking at which areas? So I'm thinking, you know, different age groups, would they be looking at a particular city versus another? Yes, we can. In, in our site, we can. But these days, you know, we, we often talk about profiles. You, you have the luxury traveler, we have the, the budget traveler, we have the independent traveler. But what we're seeing is these profiles are merging together. So, for example, a luxury traveler is just as likely to want to, uh, in addition to staying in the best hotel, eating in the best restaurants, but also want to eat street food. Uh, for the backpacker, doesn't mean they only fly budget airlines. They might also want to fly business class mm -hmm. to combine with that package. So what we're seeing is people are combining information online where they are searching and really putting together their whole experience of, of, of different, different things together in one trip. Are people also changing uh, destinations? In the past few years, have you noticed that like more people traveling to countries like Japan, to Taipei, to South Korea, Germany. Well, I don't have the kind of data that TripAdvisor has, <laughs> um, but we, we've, what we found is that people do go with the trend that is happening in, in terms of the movies, in terms of what people recommend, and of course, uh, reputable publications. So type of destination generally do not change, but we do get the occasional very interesting destinations like going to Greenland or wanting to do like a Trans-Siberia trip from China all the way to Russia. We get that. Wow. But it's not the norm. Okay, so say yes. you've decided where you want to go. What are the first steps you should take now? Are you looking at flights right away? Is that the first step? Um, well, it, if you're talking about travel planning, I, I, I guess there's two, two approach to look at it. One is as an independent traveler that's planning your own trip and one is approaching a holiday uh, experienced holiday planner like myself. So let's look about DIY. Yes, the normal way that we do it is very typical way. Find a destination, decide how, how many days of leave you have, book the flights, book the hotels that you like, and then you worry about the rest later, right? 
but for a holiday planner, uh, we spend time to find out your likes and dislikes. And when we get the information, then we'll prioritize the whole planning. So there's no sequence, there's no specific sequence, but the process will be framed by what you like or what you don't like. And with our expertise, we design the whole plan. Okay. Aaron, for the unconventional traveller, someone who wants the open road, who wants to do something off the beaten track, uh, what are some good destinations you can Well, there are so many places one can go to now. There are so many connections. So we looked at, again, we looked at our data. We looked at the, a list of the uh, winning destinations. Last year, we published a list of destinations on the rise destinations. And these are destinations that have performed better against the previous year, looking at the reviews that they have collected on hotels, restaurants uh, and attractions, uh, looking at how many bookings people are coming in on TripAdvisor. And we found uh, a number of destinations. Some were old favorites, but also because they suddenly increased in popularity over the last year. We've seen like in Europe, in Malaga, in Grand Canaria, uh, Baku is an interesting place. Uh, but on top of that also, um, we just did another survey this, uh, uh, this last, last couple of weeks and we found that there are also many different uh, uh, alternatives. For example, you can go to see the Northern Lights uh, uh, in Scandinavia, long, long way, once in a lifetime experience. But we sort of investigated what would be a nice alternative that is sort of a bit closer in Southeast Asia. We found that uh, uh, the Blue Fires, the Blue Fires in the, in the Ejen Crater in Indonesia, Beautiful scenery, beautiful setting, or Raja Ampat for diving enthusiasts, uh, also in Indonesia. Much cheaper, much closer for a quick getaway. So there are also many different unconventional places that are closer, uh, good replacement uh, uh, for one to get to. Wow, we need to talk after the show. I'm intrigued. By those <laughs> things. Okay, uh, Javani, for people who are busy preparing for a trip, you know, there's the basics, the hotel, the flight. What are things that are overlooked that are actually quite important? Um, the things that I overlook would really be Things like uh, getting the visas for Singaporeans, or at least for Asians. That is the key one thing, because we're so used to traveling with the red passport that, that we, we just don't think about, about the visa. So that's the one thing. Um, another thing that people do overlook is they get a little bit carried away with the prices they find for, say, the flights, the accommodation, they do all the booking. And when they get there, then they realize the experiences that they are after does not gel. So they end up wasting time on the trip trying to figure out how to make amendments for the plans uh, based on those, those uh, hotels that they've booked or based on the number of days that they've booked. Okay, very, very quickly, uh, can you tell us how can you blend in and not be the typical tourist if you want to be just a face in the crowd and enjoy the beauty of a, of a city or a country? What's the best way of doing that? Very quickly. <laughs> Don't do any research. <laughs> oh, I like no. it. <laughs> no, just, just go with an open mind. Okay. I think when, when you travel and you start having expectations, it's like sometimes when, when I go traveling, I hear, I hear the people around me saying, oh, you know, things are not like that back home, or, you know, this is not the same as this other place I go to. I think we have to drop all perception. We have to drop all judgment or opinions and just go and enjoy the place as it is. Then you can really feel uh, what is it like to be a local rather than going, oh, you know, that's not how we do things. Right? Okay, yeah. I like it. And also be courteous. Always be courteous. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in. One Whoa. can really never get too <laughs> much of an early start on planning a holiday. It gets you all excited, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and it definitely uh, gives you something to look forward to in the year 2017. Just yeah. make sure you maximize <laughs> all those public holidays too. And while planning in advance is all good, there's no harm being spontaneous once in a while too. Maybe head off, you know, over the weekend or something. I like it on the fly. Yeah. Why not? Why mm -hmm. not? Okay, now.